I just remembered that downstairs I have my Rode phone case. Oh, it got delivered? Yeah. They came a lot quicker than I thought they would. Uh, maybe, I, I was thinking maybe like the distribution centers in Jersey or something because I literally maybe. ordered it like last week. Yeah. I think I got in at like the last. I thought they the were, order. I thought they were pre-order. I did too. I it's swear it so said it was. weird. I swear it said pre-order. Maybe because I have a 14. Maybe. Maybe for the 15s that are producing like as needed. Well, no, because Sophie got the 15, remember? Oh, yeah. I assume she got it through like work or something. Oh. No, because remember she posted about ordering it? Oh, right, right. And she, yeah. 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 Our friend Sophie got um the, f- or she accidentally got the 15 and she put it on her, oh, shit. Wee. She put it on her story. Um, She ordered the wrong phone case. Does anyone in New York like want to come pick it up? And I um, initially was like, oh my God, me. But then I started to think about it and I was like, okay, are you also seeing the reviews? Yeah, it's really thick. It's so, it's like bulbous. It's it's bulbous on like one side. Yeah. yeah. After seeing like people actually getting it and I literally just got a new phone case. Like, and I'm. That's this like was, your favorite case. And too. it was literally $8. Like I'm not one to invest in phone cases. And for 35 bucks, I was like, I just don't need a new one. Yeah. So I, yeah, I'm not on the bandwagon, but. I um, <laughs> I hope you like it for 35 bucks and the fact that it's like thick. I just, I want to just eat it up. Cause like, yeah, like for, and I want to like make a TikTok out of see, it. Like I want to like do a thing with it. You use road. I do. I, I use road every single day. And you know what I noticed? It's not drastic, but our friend Amari posted a TikTok about how it affects his lips and it dries him out. And I noticed I started using it again and my Did lips it? get peely. There you go. That's what happens with Laneige for me. That's so crazy. The Laneige lip mask. Alex, like, she got me one for, almost said Halloween, for Christmas. And I loved it. Like, I was so excited because I would use hers from time to time. And then I started using it consistent, consistently. And that happened. The same God. thing. Like, it it pulled the moisture out. It's crazy how it affects. So, I actually I ordered no um, Summer Fridays. Oh, yeah. I'm They're s- back in stock? They're, yeah, they have tons. Oh I didn't God. know they were out of stock. Yeah, I was seeing like TikToks everywhere of people saying the, uh, the like lip. I didn't get the lip oil. I got like the like lip the treatment, like this. Thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're not lucky, dude. I think they're all in stock. Maybe they just restocked because I was seeing like all last week. I was seeing oh. TikToks of people like, uh, like making fun, like uh, Sephora workers making fun of people coming in and asking for it. And they'll be like, yeah, let me go check the back. And they'll just walk to the back and like sit on their phone for a sec. Oh or my like God. Take a sip of their coffee or whatever. Yeah. I ordered it directly from their site. So I don't know. And it's like, they're kind of expensive. They're like 25 bucks. Hmm. Um, and I know roads like what? 18. Yeah. But I'm excited. 16, I think. Let me pull up the uh, scent that I got. I did see someone uh, review the road case and you can put a lot of things in it. They even put like concealers in it. Like, oh, you can in carry the stuff little in like it. insert. Yeah. Yeah. That's nice. I'm eager to see. Okay. I got the lip butter balm in vanilla beige. Mm. And like, I don't know. I just, they look good. They look so good. And they Ki- look so good. Kylie came out with one too. A lip. Oh, I didn't know that. A lip. I don't think it's like a lip peptide. That's a little too close to road, but some lip treatment and a perfume. She's oh, just, I saw the perfume boom, thing. Boom. Yeah. The perfume thing. Uh, who was it? Victoria Paris. She said, it smells like sweet pea from Victoria's Secret. Oh, really? Which is like a good smell, but like, I'm sure it's expensive to be marketed as like Kylie Jenner's scent. Right. And, and you would just think, smell like sweet pea. And it's pro- that's probably just like a on the market scent. Like you would yeah. think she would take the time to like curate an actual. And she made a video saying like she worked with this, like, I don't know if a perfumist, was that what you'd call him? As a chemist maybe? For two years and like da da da, and it turns out to smell like, like sweet, sweet pea, pea from Victoria's Secret. Yikes, girl! <laughs> and I feel like when scents come out nowadays, they're immediately compared to a Victoria's Secret scent. Yeah, because that was at least for our generation, like that was the baseline. That was all of our first perfumes. You picked like you either like, um, why am I forgetting the lavender one? The name of that one. I can't think of the name, but Victoria's Secret had like a signature lavender scent. Are you sure it was lavender? I don't remember a lavender. Yeah. It, and I, like I, could, I could smell it right now. Like it's, 
Look up like early, like scents from the early 2000s. Because maybe they just discontinued it and it's not going to pop up. Right. I can't find it. I'm going to spend too long doing this. I want to say Secret Lavender, but it's not that because I'm just thinking Secret and Victoria's Secret. It was like along with the warm vanilla and the cherry blossom. Like it. I remember the cherry blossom. I love the cherry blossom. Oh my God. It's going to drive me crazy. Lavender. Bliss. I feel like the damn near. Yeah. I don't know. I can't think of it. But like that was the baseline for all of us. So now those notes. Yeah. Are like engraved in our memories and we compare every scent to that. now. I smell a lot of like juicy, juicy couture and the Betsy Johnson. I like I remember the bottle. Yes. Like I want to get the Betsy Johnson so bad. I want to find it somewhere. You'd probably eBay. Totally find it. But it might Ew, not. Yeah. It, it might hit. be old now. Yeah. Didn't you. You smelled your Vic, or your Ariana, Ariana Grande. Grande the other day. Yeah. I got that. Stinky. God. Probably when it came out. And it's not like it doesn't smell different. It's just dull. Uh, like it's. Okay. Yeah. I thought it like spoiled or like fermented. No. It just doesn't like. It doesn't just smell fresh. Like it's, it's just dull. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. It's not like yeah. super high quality. And I just session. never wear it. That's obviously why it lasted lo- so long. I think it's literally from the first drop. Yeah. Um, I never wore it because it it's supposed to be like a dupe of Baccarat. Yeah. And our neighbor back in, when we lived in LA, literally doused himself in Baccarat. So. <laughs> like we would know if he pulled up to the house. Yes. Like smell we could it smell when he'd him by coming. The window. So it, I'm, I don't know. I just like, uh you associate it with him. I totally associate it with him. And Leanna also got it. And it just like. It smells like Leanna. It smelled so good on her. And it just didn't hit the same on me. Yeah. I think like once you find your scent. Yep. And my scent is full. The pink crystal. Bright, Versa- bright, bright, bright crystal. Yeah, Versace. Bright, bright crystal Versace. When I smell that. I still smell getting ready at Auckland or old apartment. Getting ready to go out in LA like that. That does something to me, so I can only imagine the like brain just, like connection. I honestly in your head. don't even smell it anymore. Like it just smells right. like me. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I do that one, and then I love Glossier You. Oh, I that one's really so good. like that one on me. That one's a good like. It just elevates what you already smell like. Yep. Like it. It smells a little different on everybody, which arguably all perfumes do. But I could tell they made it to like not overpower you but like it's literally called you right like i, I see what they did, did they there. like pull out your own scent I, I liked that one on me i wore that for a few years i, I just kind of hopped around i was doing santal 33 for a minute then that then i smelled like every hotel lobby in new york so i'd right mix that <laughs> and then now i i kind of hop around i i use scent birds so i have like a lot of the minis of a lot of scents now and I'm not so obsessed about finding my one scent. I've been hopping around scents like per mood, per outfit, per what we're doing. And I've been kind of liking that. Yeah, I like that. I've been using one that literally smells like, and not in like a gross way, but it does smell like laundry detergent. And I, like, it's just fresh in Like that way. fresh cotton? Fresh cotton, fresh linen, like kind of floral. And I like wearing that just around the house or I'll even spray it before bed just to like yeah. feel put together before bed. I'm just trying to set the vibe, you know, <laughs> I was trying to like look good, feel good. Yeah. Even if I'm staying in the house, that's actually very relevant to today's topic to be completely honest. Yeah. That's, that was like a big part of what I was had in the back of my head is yeah. like forcing the look good, feel good. It's a thing. It's a, I mean, let's hop into it. I, today's topic, we obviously we're just like thinking about as we do what's relevant in our lives right now. And how can we talk about it? And I feel like for me personally, this topic is very much something I'm struggling with right now. So I feel like I'm not going to have a lot of advice, but I'm at least going to let you guys know I'm there with you. If you're struggling with the same thing, I, I don't know what it is and I'm not going to try and freak out and figure out what it is. I'm going to do that for once, but you mean like the root of it. Yeah. Just like right now, like what's like, making me feel icky lately right I just I haven't been feeling myself and like as I said last episode I had that like weird head buzzy thing again that I hadn't had in almost a year and that kind of sent me back but like I don't know I don't I don't know what it is I just feel like my self-talk has been really bad lately and it's been like the topic of conversation in my past few therapy sessions too and like trying to figure it out with her and it's just so much easier said than done. And I think so it, uncomfortable. It really is 
a big part of like your mental state because I feel like for me, once one thing is kind of knocked down, I'm even harder on myself. Yep. And that's when I'm, I almost feel like more, more vulnerable to my own words. Mm -hmm. And that's like, that's when I take the, the, all like the, the rough part of it. Yes. That's when it hits the hardest. Yep. That's a good point when you're already vulnerable and then you're yeah. talking shit to yourself. It like hits it's like 10 times harder. And it, it feels like, oh, I'm saying this to me and everything else is shit. So I deserve this. And it, it it's like digging yourself a deeper hole. Yep. You start validating your negative self-talk. Yep. Because that's easy to do. Like, I, I feel like even on a lighter note, it's easy to validate anything. Yeah. Like you and I, if we're, if we're wanting to buy something. I will find any reason. I'll, I'll, I'll literally say, do you want me to convince you to do it or right. to convince you not to do it? Because I could do both right now. Yep. And that's. That, I mean, the mind is powerful. Like that's exactly what happens in these moments of negative self-talk. Like if you're already down in the dumps, it's so easy to find 10 more reasons why what you just said to yourself is a hundred percent true and nobody could tell you different and da, 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 da. And, uh, yeah, I'm, you know, I've always known it's such a thing that it's bad for you and you know, the body doesn't know the difference of sarcasm and da, da, like, I know all that. It's just, it's so hard to apply it to myself and not even on some high shit, on some low shit. Like, I feel like I'm not, it doesn't apply to me because I'm lower than that. Yeah. It's, it's all about what we feel like we deserve, like, especially in the moment and like yeah. what, what we want to hear in the sense that like what we think is the most truthful like, I feel like we're more able to believe the worst of it than it, it's harder to believe the all the good things we want to say about ourselves. Totally. That's why, that's why when, like, when one of our friends is, oh, my God, you look so cute today, you just think they're being nice. Yeah. Like, oh, you're just, like, trying to, like, schmooze me or, like, yep. make me feel good. Hype me up. But, like, you're looking for the v validity in the words, but why can't you just believe what they say? It's, it's so much easier to believe the bad stuff for some reason. Yeah. And, uh, Alex and I talked, th talked about this, just the two of us, like if, I don't know, last week or something, as most things do, it totally starts with childhood mm -hmm. and the way that you're talked to as a kid. And we even kind of touched on that during the pessimist and optimist episode. And like, I like, I, and this isn't like a poor me. This is very much a common thing, especially with our parents' generation. They weren't very empowering. At least my parents weren't. Like we were talking about how like our, both our parents would kind of sig on us and yeah. like make us the butt of the joke as children. And like <laughs> from an adult yep. standpoint, sure. I could see how a little light joke, you think it's nothing because you have an adult brain and you know what sarcasm is and all this. But a developing child does not know what sarcasm is. No. Does, does, and neither does their psyche, whether maybe they know what sarcasm is. Because, like, I could argue my 10-year-old nephew knows what sarcasm is. He's fucking hilarious and he's really sarcastic and it's funny. But if I was sigging on him, I don't think his subconscious would take that. The same no. way as adults, our subconscious doesn't know what sarcasm is still. Right. So we believe it. and we Exactly. And and we like take part more so in negative self-talk. So that's 90, 80% of what our subconscious hears on a day to day. Yeah. So like that's, that's the truth to them. Yes. That's the truth to our subconscious. Right. I feel like we give our brains this power, if you want to call it, or this, like we assume that our brains can see through and like know what the truth is behind words. Right. And like the same way that our minds and our thoughts can dissect the truth behind words, whether they're truth or not. Like that's just not how the brain listens to what you tell yourself. Like the brain is very like, oh, like think of almost like robotic. Like you're saying no, you, you're saying these. That means things. you are unsafe. I will shut down all systems yeah. and make sure you're safe. Like our brain doesn't like in a way, like, isn't as smart as we're giving it the credit for. Is what 100%. I'm trying to say. It's just so literal. Like, Perfectly it is a hundred percent literal. And, and that's why affirmations work and all these things. But, like, 
Fuck, it's hard. It's really hard to stand in the mirror on a day when your self-esteem is at an all-time fucking low and force yourself to say, you're beautiful, you deserve everything you want and more, and all of the good things when you don't even, your, your like being in your gut doesn't believe it. Mm-hmm. Like why, it's almost as if you're, you have two sides of your brain kind of fighting for the truth. Yeah, I, that's something, that's a really good point. That's something that I like cry about in therapy. And she's like, well, both can exist at the same time too, both equally. Oh, that's exhausting. So it's like, I see what you mean by fighting for the truth, but like they could also both be true. It's just, that's where like the the final boss comes in and you should try and like be the observer of both sides rather than leaning into one Mm. that's like something she's always tried to tell me to do can you elaborate on that a little more because like where does the positive self-talk come in when you do look at both sides like at face value like how do you know what to how do you know like which side to go that's just choice that's choice of taking the like the higher path, the the more positive path, the the one that you know is going to benefit you. But like if the negative side does exist, like in my head, I'm, I'm right sitting here thinking you. like the negative side does exist. That means it is true that like, why would I like blindly go to only talking to myself positively and now I'm neglecting the negative side? Because the negative side isn't true. It's just negative self-talk. Okay. It's like, just because you said, why would I neglect if, if it exists? That means it's true. No, because think about anxiety mm. and like the moments where you think a piano is going to fall on your head. Right. It's literally just a thought in your head yelling at you. So it can exist and it sits there. Just don't touch it. Right. It's just <laughs> a thought. It's just a thought. And, and the anxiety part is something I feel like I'm getting like so much better at being the observer of oh so now I'm trying to apply that to the negative hundred percent smart I'm getting so much better at like I think maybe I've shared this before but I'll, I'll share it again what my therapist has me doing during <clears throat> like moments of anxiety is when like the thoughts are coming by like even if I'm about to panic like I was getting my hair done the other day and I literally like I was fucking 10 seconds from having a panic attack and I I talked myself down and I'm very proud of myself but what I did was well first I always touch my chest and I like rub my chest or I'll like uh like tap my fingers on my chest just like some chest stimulation always kind of helps me but then I picture myself on a like think of like BART or like the subway right and you're on the platform waiting for a train and the thoughts or the impulses or whatever you're trying to not entertain a visual way to separate from it is to look at it as a train going by, but you're still on your platform. Your, your feet are steady. You're safe, but you can watch that really fast fucking scary train go by real quick. But you're like, I won't get on it. And it, even if you start to get on it, come back to the station, you know, walk right out at the next stop and you're off the train and you're safe again. And I'm really good at applying that to anxiety but because I've I've learned like even the simple question of who told you that Mm. whenever I have an anxious thought oh my god I'm about to uh explode and have a panic attack and someone's gonna laugh at me the who told you that and then I'm like oh no one literally no I'm chilling yeah it's just I I'm still trying to figure out how to apply that to when I have negative self-talk yeah the whole anxiety part of it I feel like I'm I I feel like I'm getting better and better just the other day. Actually, what I find myself doing is tunnel vision is usually the first part of it. Absolutely. And when I feel it coming on, I get really, really dizzy and the room literally like tilts. And (sighs) what I do, I don't know if this is like, I've just gotten lucky these last few times, but when the room tilts, I like try and find something to focus on and like, adjust how I'm sitting I don't know this could be just a fluke don't listen to me but I adjust how I'm sitting so that I'm like level with what my brain's trying to do there you go and I get out of the tunnel vision and then I'm I like I do 
breathing exercises. Breathing exercises really, really help with me and my anxiety. Me too. I do breathing exercises and I just like sit there, close my eyes to like really get out of the tunnel vision and then I let it pass. Like it's so the smart. The physical aspect of it is really what I could fall into or get me out of it quick. That's great that you are able, like, I know it sucks that it comes physical immediately for you. Immediately. Mine's like heart racing Ugh. and like the lump in my throat, but that you're able to adjust to it. Like that, that's amazing. Like that's, yeah, it's like I said, I don't know if, like how accurate that is. Like the, but it, it works for works. me. It, <laughs> it works. works for me. That, yeah. That's the thing. It's not like you're over here like, oh my God, I need to hit a crack pipe and right. to feel better. Like. If you need to just lean to the left a little bit, <laughs> like, you're fine. And I, I put my hands like in between my knees a lot. Yeah. I like lean forward. Um, my old cheer coach taught me that one. Huh? Yeah. Shout out who? Uh, Brittany. I think Brittany taught me that. Br- the Brittany Lloyd. Oh my yeah. Oh my god. I yeah. feel so bad forgetting her name. It's literally <laughs> one of my family friends. Hello, if you're listening. I'm. It's very early in the morning. Yeah, I think I was like dizzy at a cheer practice once. She's like, put your hands between your head. Or your, your hands between your, your head. head. <laughs> <laughs> Ow. That would make it worse. Your hands between your knees. Yeah. Wow. I yeah. feel like she gets it. Yeah. She's with the shit. She's like a mom now too. She's probably passing it on to the youngins. God bless. Teach They're them. literally Teach like newborns. Like, <laughs> I hope they don't have anxiety right now. Another thing I've been trying to work on with the negative self-talk, especially just like in my personal realm right now is compassion before I say the mean thing. Ooh, love that. Like a little two step. Yep. I'm, you know, I'm about to sing on myself for being lazy. And then I'm like, well, hold on. Where's like, where's the truth in that? And why am I being lazy? Am I being lazy purely out of laziness? Cause that's also very much a possibility. Or is it because back to therapy, I just had a really heavy therapy session. I'm expecting myself to like hop back into productivity one minute after my call one after I close the fucking laptop or you know I won't get into specifics but like just asking my not even asking just letting myself have the space to be okay Mm -hmm. without judgment before I sing on myself yeah makes sense I think that the judgment is a huge part of why we believe the negative part of it because we could say you know I'm just being lazy I'm being a piece of shit but if you almost like own it you it's it's one of those thoughts about your day or your um yourself or like your work that could almost just exist in that moment and then go away it doesn't like really beat you down because you're owning that you're being lazy but you're not letting it like define your existence right now or even like oh I had a lazy lunch hour I had yeah. a lazy last hour of my day it doesn't mean it's a lazy day right like and it that. doesn't affect the rest of your day I like that and when we sit there and we judge ourselves we almost let it like snowball effect into other things okay well I'm having a lazy day I'm not being productive at work I'm I'm not taking my you know weekdays seriously we like find the staircase of the negative self-talk and then it goes deeper and deeper and deeper. Whereas you're just talking about how you're having a lazy day and that's it. Own that one phrase and move on and don't let it spiral. Move on. Move on. That's such a good point. I feel like that's almost a way of our brains trying to find that like label. Yeah. Yeah. Like you're just like, oh, well, if this is true, then this must be true. And then this must be true. So over arcing theme here is that I'm a piece of shit sick okay yep and it just it goes deeper and deeper and I oh I hate that yeah I think I think I'm I negative self-talk and positive self-talk is a big struggle for anyone at all stages of life I think right now I'm almost like I'm on the up and I know it's a (laughs) I know it's a roller coaster but I I I feel I've been feeling a lot more confident lately I'll just I'll just leave it there And I think a big part of it is because everything that I do, I look at as a conscious decision throughout the day. And I I know this is a part of like my analytical side. I look at it as a conscious decision and good or bad, I own it. I don't know if just like owning it is my version of like, yes, queen, Mm -hmm. do it. Like whatever. It's empowering yourself. Yeah, I'm empowering myself in even my shit 
I'm going to put in quotes, shit decisions. Like if I, what does that look like for you? If I wake up and I decide to, uh, postmate breakfast for the fifth day in the row, I know, I know I like have, I literally have food in the fridge. I, there's so many reasons why I can go walk and pick it up. Even if I do want, you know, the burrito from down the street, but I postmate it because I'm being lazy. I, I actually don't, I I try not to sit there and validate it because Mm. then I, I know that I'm validating it to make the bad sound good. And enabling, I'm enabling it. And I know that making something that I know is a bad decision sound good is almost like confusing my brain. And I sit there and I, I just like, okay, well, yep. Today I'm doing it. Whatever. Sue me. Uh, sue me. <laughs> I literally, like, I turn it into, like, a, okay, wh- who's g- who's going to fight me over this? Yeah. Who's going to judge me for eating a breakfast burrito that's <clears throat> been delivered the fifth day in a row? My bank account? Sure. But, like, I'll get <laughs> over it. I'll, I'll get over it. Like, no one's judging me for this. Why should I judge myself for this? And if someone's judging me for this, yeah. grow up. <laughs> right. That's a good point. I... I just I I, I, I like it. that. I want to try and apply that to myself, but I it, I don't even I think I skip a step there. Like I don't even care who's judging me. It goes immediately to self judgment. Yeah. See, I'm a I th- I think well if other people have the capability to judge this action, then I should be judging myself. But if I remove that aspect and if I think, well, no one gives a fuck, which they don't then why do I have to give a fuck about something so minuscule? And I'm not talking like justifying fucking going out and doing the terrible. I'm just like, just these little, like these little things that that these are the, the top of the staircase that make you think like, Oh, I'm eating out for the fifth day of the row. I'm lazy because I can't cook for myself. I'm spending money that doesn't need to be spent. I can't go outside and want like, I'm just not going to go there. And I'm, happier at the end of the day (laughs) it's like being a little delusional yeah but like not i'm I'm fucking around it's actually not delusional well it's not letting these like many things turn into a bigger negative thing about you i don't know it works no i i'm like i'm I'm just i'm trying to like learn from this but i think i think we just have a little bit of different of a root but like i admire that you've figured out the formula that's working for this time in your life right yeah. now. That's exactly where I'm trying to be, dude. Because I find that if I am able to just like own whatever shit happens throughout the day, I am able to go to sleep happy. And then if I go to sleep happy, I'm waking up happy. That's just like how my brain works. And if I go to sleep happy, mm-hmm. I wake up happy. And then maybe on a day that I wake up happy, I'm like, ooh, I'm going to make some eggs. Like I, I find that if I just let one bad thing be that one bad thing of yesterday, then I'm not going to let it spiral into a negative day tomorrow. That I relate to. And that happened the other day. Remember, I was like, it was, oh. I don't know. I, I don't remember what day. It doesn't matter. Yeah. But it was one day where I was just like, Alex, like I feel like shit today. And, you know, I'm just like negative self-talking in front of Alex. And she's like, so what? Like, Go lay in bed. Like, you're fine. Like, you know validating me and then I actually eh, I mean I guess that's telling the second you and I had a conversation you were like dude you're fine I was like oh yeah I guess maybe I'm fine. maybe it is the ju- the outer judgment thing and that just allowed you it. to drop the walls of not judging yourself I think so now that I think about it and I spent the rest of that day rotting and I woke up the next day and I was like oh I'm like I feel I'll lot fucking better yeah than i felt the past week because i finally was just like maybe you want to rot for a reason maybe right maybe my body's wanting to rest for a reason or whatever like i'm not even gonna try and dissect the reason but i'm gonna listen to what's clearly forcing me to be in the state of mind right now it's like the same thing when you tell yourself you're gonna like give yourself you're gonna go on vacation right and like i'm gonna go on vacation and i'm gonna chill and i'm not gonna work I'm not going to think about work or anything like that and then you're there and you're like fuck I really should be thinking about work right now now you've honestly just wasted that time that you told yourself you'll go on vacation because you're just thinking about how you should be on vacation right now right like if 
like it's it's like what you're saying commit to it yeah commit to it fully commit to whatever you're in and it gets over faster and if you like okay going back to the point where you said they could both exist the negative self-talk and the positive self-talk now it's like coming around in my brain Mm -hmm. um they both exist so if you almost give the space it needs to the negative self-talk it won't ask for more it and that's the thing is yeah. like don't push down your negative self talk. Yeah. Don't shove it away. Don't because then, then it's gonna come, it's gonna back, come back, tenfold. back tenfold. Exactly. Say hey, check in with it. Like right. What do you need right now? You need a nap. Right. <laughs> it's probably literally nine times out of ten what you fucking need. <laughs> or like you're hungry. Yeah. Need some water. And then yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Let like, it have its space. Let it tantrum. Yep. Let let myself eat the postmate burrito. <laughs> let yourself rot in bed. Y- then you're you're validating it in a way that it wants to be validated you're not validating it in a way that makes your positive side feel validated you want to validate the negative side yeah not the positive side you don't want to turn the negative into the positive because it's negative yeah is that make is that making sense yes because then you're forcing it to be something it's not and then yep. that can snowball into like you know, not feeling authentic and lack of self-esteem and right. whatnot. I see what I see what you mean there. Let it exist for what it is. And then maybe tomorrow it will be subsided enough to where your positive can take the floor. That, that totally it works in my head. You know, yeah, this, <laughs> like I'm, the wheels are turning. Like yeah. I like, yeah. Like it just like right. makes sense. It's right. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm literally fine. <laughs> <laughs> Try that though. Like if you're struggling with, um, you know, you're going to have a shit day, you know, you're going to talk down to yourself, maybe do it, but then sit in the mirror and say, okay, that's how I feel today. Move on. Let that be there and don't spiral. Isn't that like a Beyonce quote or something where she says don't like, spiral? no, she says something about like, like don't cry over, cry over something for x amount of time like like like, a song no i don't um, i don't know it doesn't matter regardless the message was like literally what you said just um giving giving it time but not all of your time yeah give it 10 minutes yep and then get back into it like yeah because then you're not shoving it down like we're saying but you're also not spiraling into it yeah right great point alex and i think (laughs) and i think once you like let the negative self-talk have its space and then once you acknowledge that the positive self-talk also has like time to take a stand, then you're giving the, your brain the opportunity to like actually believe the positive shit you say about yourself because you're just trusting your, you're validating both sides. Your judgment. Yeah. You're trusting that trust what, what is happening negative or positive is okay. You're still safe. Yep. You're not hurting anyone else. Yep. You're, honoring the emotions that are coming up but you're not letting them take over that's honestly that is a version of being the observer yeah is being able to step back and be like okay i need to give this this, you know 10 minutes of my energy but i also am still gonna have a really good day like you're observing that both can be present right now you're observing that one is not more important than the other or going to take over the other and it's a way of just like giving everything like a level playing field. And it's honestly, all of this is a version of releasing control. Yeah. Which a lot of my negative self-talk comes from. And a lot of my lack of compassion for myself comes from. It's just trying to control my narrative. Yeah. And like that just fucks up everything. Cause <laughs> it, it's not controllable. We are in no control none we're only in control of our reactions true that that part that i i feel like i've gotten better at too is like not reacting right away but like i don't know it's just it's so much to be a human it's a lot of work it is i didn't literally did not sign up for this (laughs) it's so hard and icky but also really cool in amazing and beautiful and both can exist at the same time and worth it it is worth our shit days are 
just that. They're just shit days. I saw a TikTok. It was saying how like the hard days and the hard things you go through and even like the really, really hard things you go through that like you might think don't apply to this still do. Those are the things that make life life. And I know that sounds like a fortune cookie, but that analogy they gave was like, imagine, or let me back up a little bit. Like they were saying, that's what like at the end of your life, you know, on your deathbed, you're like, oh, what makes life so rich is that I got over those things. Yeah. It's the self-satisfaction and like realizing that you were strong enough all along and, you know, all the things. And the analogy they gave was like, think about if you were playing Mario Brothers and it's like the opening level and he's walking and he hops in a tunnel and then he ends up at Princess Peach. Yeah. You wouldn't play the game. You'd be right. like, this is way too, like, it's too what? easy. There's no satisfaction. I didn't earn it. You know, like it, you wouldn't play the game. Yeah. I love that. Isn't that cool? I, I love saw that. that last night. I was like, okay, I feel a little better. Yeah. And I mean, we say this all the time, all of the really hard things that we go through in life. I mean, you know us, we always try and find a lesson and it, it's true though. Like even when we talked about grief and we were both going through grief at the same time, like there's always something there's always a silver lining, even in the worst, worst parts of life. And there's always, you know, a positive to the negative. It's it's the balance of life. Like, yeah. it's why the positive is so good when we're in the positive. And yeah, you don't know the good days without the bad. Right. That contrast, the yin and yang. Yep. Golly, man. But it is a lot of work. And it's, it's a constant reminder for me. Yes. Because like even spitting out this episode right now. It, tomorrow it, we're probably gonna have a shit day <laughs> some, exactly like, and that's the reality but it's coming back to yeah. conversations like this mindsets like this fucking replaying this episode if you need to i know i literally as we were talking a, f- a few minutes ago i was like i will be listening to this episode more than <laughs> yeah. once but like th- that's your toolbox yeah right like little you know your support systems your best friends your therapist your partner like those are the things that keep you grounded and i think life isn't about trying to master anything a but per this conversation it's not about having a good day every day and always being nice to yourself because that's just not how the chemicals in our brain work it's about when those icky times come when that panic attack is coming on when that negative self-talk is happening in the mirror being able to stop not react so immediately and reach into those support systems or reach within to those things like leaning to the left hands between the knees or right. tap in the chest, like reaching into your toolbox, whatever that looks like for you. And just like grounding and coming back to base one. Cause at least for me, like a lot of my riled up moments, they really do just take six to 10 belly breaths to reset my parasympathetic system. And then I'm like, Oh, I'm chilling. Yep. And that's like, that's what happened in the, uh, hair salon the other day. Yeah. I was freaking out a little bit. I, Alex gave me one of her headphones that helped me for a sec. And then I was just like, let me just like focus on my breathing. Cause at the end of the day I got my breath Yep, and that worked for me. And I feel like I could say that works for everyone. You guys, if you really focus on a parasympathetic breath, excuse me, that was the hardest word to say today, belly breaths, like breathing in where your belly inflates, not your chest. If you do like six to 10 reps of those, your body has no choice other than to go from the sympathetic to the parasympathetic system. Like try that next time. And like, what are those symptoms? I've never heard those words. Flight or flight or not. Oh, okay. So yeah, your sympathetic is like when your nervous system and you're freaking out and your heart's racing, the tunnel vision that. that that's your body's like, freaking out that you're in danger so it's taking away for you your vision vision. for me sense of feeling in my limbs like it'll take those away to conserve energy and to literally keep your heart keep beating so you don't die not that you will die from your anxiety just saying this is just a reaction of your body but then those breaths is breaths is your breaths (laughs) those breaths bring you back and tell your body like oh 
the fact that I'm able to complete these big belly breaths wow. means I am safe now. If you ever watch a baby sleep, they breathe from their bellies. You know, they're like little baby bellies. Yeah. They're really big. Like when they're like napping all the time, oh. we lose that. As humans, we we lose that. Yeah, we breathe like from our mouth, like and our from chest. The chest. Yeah, like when someone's like, "Take a big breath," you go, and your chest gets big, and those still feel good, and those are still beneficial, and those are still a way to like get your mind back to your breath. I'm not saying those are wrong, but like try and like inflate your belly when you're doing it. You're even still doing your chest a little. Yeah. Oh. It's a little harder too. Yeah. Do you feel like the muscles stretching a little different? Because we don't work them as much anymore. Yeah. But like that's why breath why? work. <laughs> I don't know. I think because we, as we get older, there's a, a lot more of a reason to go into fight or flight from time to time. Oh. Not even on some sad shit. Like think about on a primal level when you're finally old enough to go hunt for the tribe. Like right. you, you got to. You gotta be a little scared. You gotta be ready. You gotta be on your toes. So <laughs> that's also like the beauty of the human body is like it can help you in it's really stressful doing, situations too. Right. It's doing the work just as much as your brain is trying to. Right. But a lot of and I feel like this is very much a common conversation in like therapy right now, which I love. I feel like our we're waking up a little bit. Is yes, there's a time and place for your body to do those things, but like we're saying at the beginning of this episode, the brain is brilliant, but not as brilliant and double meaning knowing as we think it is to where you don't need to be in fight or flight all the time anymore when things might have put you in it as a kid. Like the pattern starts there. Like you right. as a kid, if you were in it a lot, then your body's like, oh, this is, this is life. This is just where I live now because this is all I know. But that's why like getting older is like reprogramming your body to realize you're, you don't need to be in that anymore. We're safe now. Wow. And those are to that point, like those are affirmations. I do tell myself in times of panic is like, and I do it in my room a lot. Like these are your four walls. No one's going to barge in right now and yell at you. No one, like you are so safe. You just described anxiety to me. <laughs> it, literally a day. Yeah. And I'm sure for a lot of people listening and for myself, like that yeah. is it. That's what it is. Yeah. It's just like the lack of safety and your, and those symptoms that come, whether it's the racing thoughts or the physical symptoms, whatever anxiety looks like for you. Cause it fucking shows up different for every human. I swear. It's just your body being like, we're going to die. That's why panic Yikes. attacks feel like you're going to die. Yeah. Straight up. Yeah, anxiety is, it's icky, but <laughs> it's not really going anywhere because I think it is part of the human experience. And I don't say that in a way, I hope that doesn't like scare you guys, but it's, it's also a realist way of looking at it. Like triggers are going to happen and things are going to make you anxious and all that. But like, it's just about having the tools to like chill. <laughs> right yeah totally just like <laughs> chill just relax that's my sister has said that all my life all my life whenever like I'm like oh my god I'm freaking out like I like the other day when I had an anxious week I was texting her and she's like I could picture her just just chill but like she's so right yeah like she and like she'll she's a great sister she'll give me the advice I need but initially she'll be like yeah that's total. I totally get it that that is an icky feeling to have and I'm like yeah but I want to like, it's she's like spiral. She's like, no, you're just having an icky thought. That is icky. You okay now? I feel like she's the master of positive self-talk. She <laughs> is. Negative self-talk does not exist in Monica's world. You know what though? Given credit where credit's due, man, or growing up for her, it was like all that was spoken to her and like she's worked so hard to get there though. Yeah. Like she's not living in la 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 land. la land which some people are and i don't say that as a sig no but i wish i was like that like there are <laughs> good for you there are eggs out there that are like just always like yeah. kind of in that bliss. i feel like i feel like pookies in la la land perfect example <laughs> but yeah monica has like really had to like teach herself yeah. that and she, it's her I way know. of regulating 
Yeah. And I, she's mentioned like having kids, not that having kids is your band aid here or what you should do to fix your anxiety, (laughs) but she has two kids and she's always mentioned like the second she had babies, she really was able to like put, you know, positive self talk, support, love into this, you know, exterior being an extension of herself. And it, helped heal her inner child because she was like these kids are so they literally don't even have to do anything and they're so fucking lovable Mm -hmm. so am i yeah and like i mean she she let her positive self-talk even though it's like external it's it's still like validated it and made it feel like it is the truth so she could say it back to herself yeah and it's like that same thing where i mean i feel like every conversation about self-talk addresses this but why would we say something negative to ourselves when Mm. we wouldn't say it to our best friends or to our children or to our like mothers and our fathers yeah and even to a stranger if we're not gonna say shit to a a stranger why would we say it to ourselves and it's it's just that practice of saying something positive to them well yeah. yeah now I could say it to myself yeah that's a good point yeah like I would never be like Alex, you are a lazy piece of <laughs> shit. What are you doing? Right. What What are you doing with your life? Why aren't you being productive with work? It's the, like, we're, if you're not going to say one, like, if you're not going to spiral at me, why spiral at yourself? I couldn't even spiral at you if I tried. Yeah. So why am I doing that? To, dude. Because we think we could take it. Because we think, like. I get, well, lack of self-esteem. You think yeah. you're, you think you deserve it. You think you're deserve, deserving of like that, fuck you, blah, blah, because many reasons, maybe that's how you were spoke to as a child or by an ex lover or, you know, there's usually, you'll say usually not a hundred percent of the time, but there's usually some catapult there that you might be thinking about that like kind of puts you in that. Right. But like that's in the past. <laughs> And it's not, it's not true. It's not true. It was like a projection of them. Like the, the shitty parents that, you know, were shitty to their kids were just hurting themselves and doesn't validate it. But it's just, I say that because it wasn't because you were a shit kid. It's because they had their, I mean, they were shit (laughs) parents. They They had had their their own own demons demons that that they they were taking out on you. Yeah. Everyone's perfect. (laughs) <laughs> everyone's perfect and the everyone's world is perfect beautiful in their own way um kind of side note did you see that jubilee what jubilee released on international women's day is that the the food or the restaurant no jubilee it's like a it's like a cut or like a oh yeah it's yeah, like yeah. a media source what am, I, th- what am I thinking of there's a restaurant called jubilee right let's go no don't let me go there but i I'm think i know what you're talking Do you about like it? <laughs> Are you thinking of Jiffy Lube where you get no. your oil change? No. Jubilee. There's like a, maybe like a peanut butter. That's Jiffy. Let me, let me see. Restaurant. Well, this is a French restaurant, but that's not what I'm thinking about. It's like a chain. Jolly Bee. Jolly Bee. <laughs> same <Okay>. thing. <laughs> Literally the same thing. Um, Jubilee released a video on International Women's Day, which was Thursday or Friday. And, and happy belated. Yeah. Happy belated, everybody. Um, they compared and rated a hundred women's bodies. Oh, the public compared and rated a, a lineup of a hundred women and the women were in the room. They didn't see the rating until after the, I don't know, the video and they each like went around the room and ranked themselves and said like, so the, the host came on and was like, okay. I want the people who think they're in the bottom 10 of the rating to leave now or like to like like step away. Yeah. Step away. Like clock out. And they all talks among themselves and like pick 10 people to leave the room. Why, why would they do that on international women's day? Right. It was so tone deaf and it's, (sighs) was there some like deeper meaning at the end where they like, Don't talk to yourself like this. I don't know. I watched it like clipped on TikTok. So it could have just like not been included, but they kept like promoting a different app. So I don't know. It's like a weight loss app. Could you, could you imagine? Who knows? At that point, like. like, 
I, I, I don't get it. I didn't see it. I wasn't behind it. A lot of the comments were like, what the fuck on National Women's Day? My only thought was they were trying to get people to like, oh, everyone's perfect. It doesn't matter what people, what society rates you. Sure. Sure. But then they have these women who are putting themselves in the bottom back it, b- bracket. Sorry. And they go off camera and they have the option to see what society ranked you. So I found the video because I found one of the women who was in the experiment and she just like talked about her experience and she was like, I knew I was going in there and um, I knew society's like uh, perception of me wouldn't be top 10. I didn't even Mm -hmm. think top 50. But then when I when I ended up putting myself in some bottom bracket and then I went off screen, they're given the option to look at what society ranks you. She was like, it just validated that. Like it validated what I was thinking, what I was thinking about myself. Yeah. Yeah. And it's what (laughs) I I'm just more think. So like, why would they do that on fucking international women's day? I don't know. Why would they do this in general? A well then to use international women's day, yeah, as like we're gonna post it today, yeah. like make a stands. What? It, yeah, who? That's. <laughs> I mean, remember I did that video. Was it David Alvarez's video? It was one of their videos where it was ranking, uh, by attractiveness. Yeah, it was the hardest thing I think I've ever done. And all the you were there. Yeah, you were there came with me, and all the girls were so like I. Uh, like we like, like didn't you don't want to put yourself well there were, it was funny because there was this one girl who she kept put, like voting herself number one and like ev- they were it got to the bottom 10 and then there was one girl who there was two girls in the bottom 10 that they were all voting for and like every time <laughs> every time the other people would vote for this one she'd be like oh thank you and like kind of pose <sighs> and it, she came off and she ended up being like 13 but oh well i'm glad she has like yeah 13 right but she um it just like brought up the fact that we're sure like even when you're lining up to rank you don't want to put yourself number one because you don't want to be like oh well i think i'm number one just but shit then on everyone yeah i'm just shit, like i'm prettier than you but then you don't want to you don't want to put yourself last because you're like i don't want to i don't want to think i like deserve that so that right there alex is like the epitome of finding the balance of confidence because you could also argue the girl putting herself first that's amazing that she thinks of herself that highly right i even hated like saying that in that tone because like i fucking wish i i was there but then but then we give her shit for doing it well like and then you're putting yourself in a scenario where other people's literal judgment and ranking of you does matter in this case because it, like you're trying to win a buck or like whatever and the ranking like it's an actual ranking so they're ranking you but to have that confidence and then it be knocked off its pedestal because of outer judgment like it's just it's the it's not, opposite I mean, it's not doing anything it's not all. doing <laughs> like it's well it's doing what the opposite of your confidence should be doing for you yes like yes. i wish i was that girl who was like fuck thank you but then if i were to step off and be like oh my god but society doesn't think that yeah then you just knocked the confidence that i worked so hard to build up yeah yeah i mean that's that type of video is something like, why that do like, people do <laughs> that most likely will never happen in the general person's life. Right. Totally. Which is, I mean, that's, that's why that doesn't happen <laughs> because <laughs> look what it does. Like, yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's crazy. And I, I remember when I did it, it was like, it was uncomfortable. It was hard. I felt shitty and I've definitely felt like, you know, the less, like the less cute one. Like it was, I, I remember walking away from it, from it, like, granted, I, I know all those people personally, so it was, like, a little easier than, like, doing yeah. this with strangers, but I felt pretty icky about it. Like, it's, yeah. no matter where you're at, you feel icky, because either 
or you're putting on someone else or you're feeling shitty about yourself. Like it's ranking. Ranking human beings shouldn't be a thing. (laughs) Imagine how these fucking NFL players feel when their whole job is like a ranking system. Well, see, that's where I'm almost like that's actual talent and like skills. Yeah. I'm not. It's not about ranking like something you can't control. Something like you can't control, right? Like yeah. these people work their whole lives, and like the people who it's like it's proven that you put mo- most work in, like your skills are going to be better. Like yeah. these people practice, you know. I just think about. I, I mean, I don't <laughs> know. This I'm is sure good. That, You're sympathetic for them. This is good. I, I well, I, I think there's probably is some emotional turmoil there. Like, oh, I'm sure your whole life amounts to this. Yeah, and these these boys work all their life for you know to get on this team and then they're ranked like fucking last totally they're like oh wow i all i worked for this for nothing like yeah i I think about that with professional athletes all the time like they they work their whole lives to be this and then if they're if you don't get like super big like you just worked your whole dream right like if you're not like a fucking travis kelsey or like and then you just like play on the team my boyfriend was taught tell talking to me about this uh, basketball player who he he has this contract right now for four years and every time you get out of a contract you're a free agent so that last year you usually like up your game so another team will want to swoop you up and you sign another contract and he's like notorious for those first three years being like a shit player and then the last year he just like goes ham averaging like he's averaging like 30 points a game right now but then he's gonna get signed and like get his check yeah and then then he'll like up his game towards the end of it and then he just like keeps getting that's crazy (laughs) isn't that nice like he does this on purpose you think i don't know everyone just how would we know yeah what is that like a way to like like get your check like get that like oh my god this guy is on fire right now like I don't you're like 80 mil I don't know I think he's just trying to like I don't know I don't know why he would do it I don't know <laughs> I, that's the only thing I could think of I don't know it's just funny I, I I don't know I just think about those boys a lot I think about like they work like, they work they hard. work so hard and then like the Super Bowl imagine right how sad they I were. think a lot about the the Kelsey brothers when yeah. they were in the Super Bowl together yeah. and like did you watch Jason Kelsey's retirement speech no oh but he's what a guy he's a perfect person <laughs> yeah. i love him so much yeah no was, you should watch it but yeah I just, I, like i hope they have mental health resources because i could only <laughs> imagine what the fuck that would do to me yeah yeah that's why i'm not an nfl player though so right. i guess i'll i think i'll be good yeah you'll be good just don't just don't go in to be ranked for anything no, else never again never i've walked away from that video i was like i'm not strong enough for this no. <laughs> i don't i don't need to be doing this I, I wonder, I mean, if there are any men listening, like, I would love to know how men feel about this topic. Yeah. I think men and women generally, generalizing everything here, approach this topic so much different yeah. and we're raised so much different within this topic and society crazy just to think about. hits us differently with this topic. Actually, they're, so at Orange Theory, there's this one coach, he's so, he's amazing um he at the end of every class you stretch for like five minutes just like cool down stretch and he always just like drops some like love and like love that he's like spiritual and it's i love it he's super cool and it was was it a holiday actually i don't think it was no it, it wasn't international Women's Day or anything it was just like a random day and it was a class orange theory is a pretty let's say like 70 percent woman 30% men generally. And he was talking about, um, he always leaves you like when you go out in the world today, uh, blank. And that day his message was just, it was about compassion, which was like, whatever he says is always like so fitting for what's going on in my life. Okay. And he was like, like ladies, like go out there and take up the space you deserve. Oh. And you know, just hyping up women like that. And he was like, and to my men in here, a little bit easier for us and we have to acknowledge that and support the woman around us oh and it was just like i love that it, it was so beautiful but it had me thinking like yeah that's true like it yeah i'm not saying you know i'm not gonna sit here and say every man has it 
great because there's also a lot of stats that say like men have really negative like more like eating disorders than women but it's just not talked about as much because you know they're they're not fucking talking about it um but yeah i just think about like the men who are struggling in silence because i know there's so many of them yeah but they're they're like they're not this is fat quotes you guys fat quotes right here they're not allowed or it's not acceptable to go be and listen go listen to these types of podcasts or anything like that right like it's it and shows even likeness like, and like right it's and just even so even this like i mean we are women so we naturally talk we are women <laughs> we naturally talk like from a women's standpoint but true this is like a, a woman uh like a majority of our demographic is women like and it over 90 percent right it is it is a women woman driven podcast so like men wouldn't click on something like this typically typically i and, and i hope any men listening do. like keep listening yeah because i i know if you can that's the thing if even if a man listened to this like if they could separate the gender from it the lip gloss talk in the beginning and yeah. all that and separate the gender i think we say messages that can be oh my god universal yeah. absolutely daily. but that you know i digress i just i don't know are there like are there men podcasts out there where like there's two homies having these conversations for men? Yeah, I would hope so. It's probably a different, um, like a different take, like a different voice. Sure, Probably a lot more like hyping up something they can listen to. Yeah. Even that, like they, that, cause you're right. Like that is kind of how men register that confidence is hyping each other off. Think about like locker room. Let's go. Like, right. Why don't we do that? Wait, I told it you is. that TikTok I saw, this girl, she was going, like, flexing her muscles, going, let's go, let's go. And the caption was yeah. like, ladies, we got to do this more. Like, this feels really yeah, good. It's actually really nice. <laughs> <laughs> we should. So maybe we need to learn something from the boys. I think that's just our version of, like, yes, queen. Yeah. Go, pop off, sis. Pop off, sis. I just don't say that to Kristen ever. No. <laughs> I think the most were like, shit. Shit. We go, shit. Shit. I okay. look good. You look good. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's, that's the most that's of it. Of it. I've never been like, yeah. <laughs> I don't think I could. Like, okay, shit. pop off, sis. Pop off, sister. <laughs> well, I think I'm healed after this episode now. So, so no more bad days. No more bad days ever again. And everything's perfect. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Love you guys. <laughs> We hope you're perfect too. Yeah. Well, you are. Everyone's perfect, right? Everyone's perfect. Everyone's hundreds in my head. Every everyone is perfect, besides boys. Yeah. In Jubilee. In Jubilee (laughs) sucks. Sucks. That's crazy. That's really something. Yeah, I don't know. Whatever. Um, I'm going to see Dune right now. Oh, you watched the first one. I watched the first one. Finally. Summary. Then we'll be here all day. <laughs> no, no. Actually, if I gave a summary, it would probably take five minutes, which is the most infuriating part. That you spent two and a half hours. God. You were like, pot. I heard you yeah. pausing it. I was like, pausing. you were like, taking breaks. You were taking breaks. You would walk around, like, get some water. <laughs> I was taking breaks. I did a little online shopping in there. Yeah, it, the first movie was just pure setup. He doesn't even meet Zendaya until the last 20 minutes of the movie, Kristen. I'd be hot. Yeah. <laughs> Think about all the people who went to, si- to, like, to see her. Yeah. 20 minutes. Well, I've heard the second one is incredible. So incredible. I'm actually so excited. Yeah, I'm so excited good. for this movie. They're going to go see a movie. And then guys, my laundry's out of hand. <laughs> Don't even ask. It's so bad though. So I'm going to do some laundry and then we're going to do a sample. So we're going to go to the sample cell down in sale down in Soho later. Yep. Do a little more shopping. So I'm more in a big shopping. shopping mood. I know because it's getting warmer. Look yeah. at the sun right now. New clothes season. And I am rediscovering different colors to wear too with my hair mm. being like more red than it was. Like I just need to. Yeah. Adjust. I like blue with it. Yeah. Blue. I mean, duh. Blue, Literally yeah. the color wheel. Like. Yeah, I like the blue with it and the burnt tones in here too. Yeah, I go like more natural and earthy with it. Cute. Yep. yep, we'll see. Cute. All right, you guys. Well, happy Monday or whenever you're listening to this. Happy day. Week. For Patreon, Um, 
let us know where you're at with this. What yeah. What are some things in your toolbox that you use on the day to day? Please, yeah, write let those us, in. Let us know where you where you guys are at. And as always, if you just have anything general that you want to send in, we will always get to those. Yep. And if you're listening on Spotify, make sure you rate us five stars and leave a review and let us know that we're nice. all perfect in the hundreds. Make sure you Please. let us know we're perfect. Also, if you're on YouTube, subscribe because we're perfect and thumbs up if if we think we're perfect. Yeah. And comment down below. Perfect. If you're if you're if you, <laughs> hey, if you're perfect, comment down below. Yeah. Everyone should be commenting. <laughs> all millions. <laughs> all millions of you. Oh shit. All right, guys, have a good week. And love yourself. And don't let one bad day ruin your whole week. One bad thought is not a bad day. Mm -mm. Like, it's just... It's just a bad thought. You're perfect. And then just chill out. (laughs) Chill and be nice to yourself. Yeah. Love you guys. We love you. Bye. Bye.